Hello and welcome to my presentation on market access and reimbursement for medical devices in Germany. My name is Julia Knorr and I am a senior consultant at Calms Consulting. I will first start with an introduction of Calms Consulting and why we are a partner for regulatory affairs and market access for medical device manufacturers. And then we will dive deep into, um, into German, um, Germ the German healthcare system and Germany as a reference market for Europe. We will see the different stakeholders and different market access routes for medical device manufacturers. And at the end, we will see how this is achieved. And this is by generating evidence, evidence and evidence. So Kalms Consulting is a Berlin based consultancy with two small offices in the US. And we have 55 um, worldwide partners um, to, who do more or less what we do to also conduct international projects. We support medical device manufacturers with market access and reimbursement in both sectors, in the inpatient and the outpatient sector, um, and also with regulatory affairs and stakeholder communication. For operational tasks, we have um, the brand counts operations. We work from head to toe, so we are not limited by um, any indication and also not by the type of uh, medical device. So we are covering um, medical devices as well as in vitro diagnostics. And now we will see market access and reimbursement in Germany and how that works. So for Germany, it is very important to know that nearly 90% of Germans are um, insured in the statutory health insurance system. So the, um, these 73.1 um, million uh, people out of 83.2 million uh, inhabitants are covered by the statutory health insurance. And the mindset of the German is that the statutory health insurance covers for all, everything that is needed to, to cure a disease. Um, so out of pocket payments are really tough in Germany and um, not very well accepted. Already payments um, of five euros are mostly not accepted by German patients. So that is the reason why it is so important to be um, to be covered by the reimbursement schemes um, of the statutory health insurance in Germany. The, the German market is divided into two sectors, the inpatient sector, so in hospitals, and the outpatient sector in, in doctor's offices. In the inpatient sector, as this is a very protected environment, um, we have the permission with reservation of prohibition, um, which means Verbotsvorbehalt. And in the outpatient sector, we have, have the right of permission, so Erlaubnisvorbehalt. So for a new method, that means that CE Mark medical devices can be used and also reimbursed in the protected environment of the hospital. Um, but if reimbursed in the outpatient sector, um, an, a method assessment is needed. Also, uh, when looking at the payment schemes, we have differences in the inpatient and the outpatient sector. Um, so in the inpatient sector, we have the DRG lump sum um, payments with um, permanent and, and temporary on top payments. Uh, the uh, permanent on top payment would be the ZE Zusatzentgelt and the te temporary on top payment is the NUB. In the outpatient sector, we have the EBM um, fee schedule, the Einheitlicher Bewertungsmaßstab. And in both sectors, we have um, the private health insurance catalog, the GOA. I already mentioned that reimbursement is always assessed for methods in, in Germany. Um, there is very few occasions where there's really product specific reimbursement um, and these can be found in the outpatient sector and are namely the medical aids and the DIGAS, the digital health applications. In the inpatient um, sector, we have the 
DRG lump sum that fully compensates all hospital in efforts, including materials, so medical devices, but also ward and, and staff. And um, the, the DRG is the result of the grouping of a diagnosis, an ICD code or several with, um, with a procedure code, the OPS. Linked to that procedure in very costly cases, um, there can be a permanent on top payment, the Zusatzentgelt, and also an, um, a temporary on top payment, the NUB. The NUB is, a, a, is an annually a renewable um, inquiry procedure. In the outpatient uh, sector, we have the EBM fee schedule and um, the physician's income from a treatment case um, is the result of, um, of, of the point value um, that accounts for, um, for approximately 10 euro cents multiplied with the sum of, um, of EBM points allocated to a service. And this um, service compensates for the physician effort and, of course, um, everything that is uh, related um, uh, to, to that effort. So other um, uh, personal uh, working in the, in the doctor's office, for example, and um, including also standard materials. Specific materials can be reimbursed on top. And this is Germany's healthcare system in a nutshell. We have the Ministry of Health, the BMG, defining the legal framework, controlling and supervising in, um, in, on, on, on the top. But the um, central executive organ is the, the GBA, the Federal Joint Committee. And um, this is also the reason why the German healthcare system is called a self-administration. We have the uh, legal framework defined by the Ministry of Health, but the GBA is making the decisions um, on reimbursement. And the GBA consists of members from the KBV, the practitioner organization, the head organization of the statutory health insurance funds, and the German Hospital Society, the D DKG. When it comes to evident, evidence analysis, um, this is outsourced to um, different HTA institutes, in most cases the ICVIC. Um, and then we also have um, the BFARM, the Federal Institute for Drugs and Medical Devices, um, for safety and risk management, also for uh, medical devices, it's mo mostly known in the in the um, pharmaceutical um, space, <clears throat> and um, it hosts also the innovations office and um, holds the DIGA directory or the DIGA list. The DIMD is now also part of the BFARM and is there for the maintenance of nomenclatures such as the OPS and ICD nomenclatures. And these are all the different application pathways for innovative methods. It starts with a CE marked medical device on top and can be different for the outpatient or the inpatient sector. A pathway that covers both and that can also be used actively by manufacturers is the 137E uh, procedure in the, in the center. Um, and part of it is first the potential analysis and, um, and then in a second step, um, the, the method assessment to see if the method has really benefit to, to the system and to patients. In, pa in, in, in the case um, that the new method is um, positively assessed, um, this results in a um, new EBM code for reimbursement in the outpatient sector and a new DRG code in the inpatient sector. Um, when we look um, to the NUB inquiry process, so the temporary on top payment with an annual deadline, um, these inquiries are handed in by, by um, hospitals. And if a high-risk pr product is part of, of the NUB, 
Um, then a, sub, a, a dossier has to be submitted with the inquiry and um, this can also result in a method assessment by the GBA. In the um, outpatient sector, uncoupled from, um, from the GBA, we have the DIGA fast track with a different authority, the BFARM, um, and also the medical aid catalog that is run by the head organization of the statutory health insurance funds. So our last uh, focus will be on evidence requirements. Um, first of all, we have to differentiate between um, two types of evidence for medical devices, actually. One is um, the regulatory evidence to show product safety and performance. So to show that the product does what it should do according to its intended use. And then on the other hand, the evidence to demonstrate medical benefit for the reimbursability of a method. So to show that the method and the medical device or IVD can be part of that method has a patient relevant benefit measured in morbidity, mortality and quality of life compared to the reimbursed standard of care. So in, in one sentence showing that the method of treating or investigating a patient is better than the standard of care. Um, this this is not um, totally uncoupled from each other. Um, it is wise to already integrate patient relevant endpoints in my um, regulatory evidence to, to save valuable time on the path to reimbursement. So regulatory and reimbursement requirements on evidence um, have always um, been be, to be analyzed in a holistic approach. So this is the, the, the level of evidence criteria for the evidence that is needed for, um, for reimbursement. And the GBA would only accept 1A or 1B evidence um, to really show um, patient benefit. So randomized control trials um, need to be uh, performed at least for a, um, for a positive method assessment. All these non-comparative studies can be part of the dossier, but the decision will always be based on the evidence um, of LOE 1A or 1B. So what is benefit according to, to the GBA criteria? Benefit is mortality, morbidity and uh, health-related quality of life, as I said. And the political view of that would be an improvement of a health state, shorter duration of disease, a longer life, reduction of side effects and the improvement of quality of life. Sometimes in these comparative studies, um, surrogate parameters are compared um, like blood pressure, um, blood glucose level or virus load, but these will not be accepted for benefit assessment. But they can, uh, they, they can be accepted for the first step, the potential assessment. But in the second step, always the, the benefit, be, benefit must be shown in um, patient relevant um, uh, categories, which is mortality, morbidity and health related quality of life. So my take home messages for you are um, that the German healthcare system has reimbursement wise two care sectors, the outpatient um, sector where we need permission first and the inpatient sector where um, there is a reservation of prohibition for reimbursement. Um, the health technology assessment is always performed for a method and not for products or in very rare cases only for, um, for products. And the highest healthcare authority is the GBA, the Federal Joint Committee. There are um, active um, application pathways for manufacturers, like the 137E procedure, um, but a method assessment can also be passively triggered when the method diffuses into the system through the use of in, in a hospital, for example. Medical evidence is the currency for reimbursement in Germany um, and the minimum requirement for any reimbursement claim as well as risk minimization is the proof of the potential to be a treatment or diagnostic alternative. A commonly used interim reimbursement with an annual deadline is NUB 
and the 137E procedure um, is a procedure where, where um, evidence showing benefit is generated under um, reimbursement conditions. Thank you very much for your attention.